Hi guys, I've had several people sending me emails and asking me to talk a little bit more about my work. And uh, I've been working a long time so I've probably got a lot to talk about. But uh, one of the uh, products uh, that I uh, made and developed was a thing called a getter firer. And um, uh, a getter is a, a device that's used in uh, the old-fashioned TV tubes, uh, cath cathode ray tubes, CRTs they're called, um, and uh, they're using valves or tubes as the Americans call them. And um, uh, I've made all sorts of um, uh, get fires um, that they're also used in uh, fluorescent tubes. And uh, what happens if you take um, a valve or a, a TV tube? Um, it's uh, an electrothermal device, so uh, it's an electronic device that relies on some thermal action inside the filament to, to get the electrons stirred up and get them moving around. And what happens is um, these, uh, to do this you, you need the filament to uh, heat the cathode of the device and uh, to stop the filament from burning out you need to draw a vacuum and uh, for, for most valves or TV tubes the length of the tube, uh, sorry the life of the tube is dependent on the filament not burning out. So uh, the harder you can make the vacuum the more air you can get out of the system the longer the, the life of the TV tube. There are some other benefits as well I guess but the main thing is you, you suck all of the air out of the TV tube, you seal it off at what's called the pinch, uh, so the glass is melted and the tube is sealed, uh, and then you fire a getter inside the, the, uh, the TV tube or the valve. And uh, typically that's uh, what's called a barium loaded getter, and you, you heat that getter and that consumes the last bit of oxygen, anything that the vacuum hasn't pulled out. So it gets consumed by the, uh, the, the barium loaded getter. And um, on uh, valves or tubes you'll see there's very often a pin marked NC, no connection. Um, and that's no connection for you to make, but it was a connection uh, when the valve manufacturer made the, uh, the valve, they actually uh, used one of the pins and the pin mark no connection, put some current through it and that heats um, uh, a little bit of metal that is the getter and when the getter fires you get that silvering effect on the on the inside of the valve and that's uh, where the, uh, uh, the the metal vapor is condensed onto the onto the glass and as I say I've, I've made uh, getter fires that are induction heating uh, devices and that is uh, typically a, a radio frequency uh, power source, an induction heater. I uh, did a lot of work around the 100 kilohertz mark. Um, so uh, the RF signal is fired into a tank circuit, that's a capacitor and a coil, and that coil is um, applied to the getter and so what happens the coil produces a powerful uh, electromagnetic field that's alternating. You can think of the uh, work coil of the induction heater as being the primary of a transformer and the, the part that's going to be heated, the getter, as the short circuit secondary of a transformer and um, uh, the, the difference between the sort of transformer that you're normally used to is um, you, you'll be very familiar with transformers with an iron core that links the primary and the secondary so the flux is linked by the iron core um, but uh, at radio frequency you don't necessarily need an iron core, in fact an iron core would get hot because of that frequency eddy current heating. So um, it means that you can actually link the primary and secondary coils with an air core, it doesn't need a core. Um, 
uh, I won't go into ferrites uh, at this stage. Um, uh, and what this means is that you can have the getter on the inside of the valve and uh, the induction heating coil on the outside. And um, I'll show you some pictures of um, uh, a TV getter firing. And uh, this is a um, uh, part of a repair facility, that uh, TV tube has just been refurbished so it's had a new uh, gun fitted to it and it has uh, a getter, um, there's actually two getters, there's one in the neck uh, called a ring getter and then there's another getter which is on a, 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 a it's called an antenna getter and it's actually on a bit of metal that um, as it's introduced into the neck, so it swings round to the side of uh, the uh, the envelope, and uh, the guy standing there has got the um, the uh, antenna getter firing coil in his hands there. So these are sort of quite early uh, machines. So I'm saying this is um, not a, a production machine. Uh, this is uh, a part of a refurbishment. So I've made uh, getter fires for uh, TVs, for all, all sorts of things. And um, <laughs> what I wanted to talk about today was um, back in the 1980s, I guess it was, in the early 1980s, we were contacted by uh, Sinclair, that's uh, Clive Sinclair's company, now Sir Clive. And they wanted us to build a uh, a, a, an induction heating system to fire getters in his latest development which was a flat screen TV and that was very clever in as much as uh, instead of using uh, electromagnetic deflection they used electrostatic deflection so normally in a cathode ray tube uh, the beam comes out of the back and then it's uh, scanned via scanning coils on the, on the screen in a raster. And what Sinclair did was he made a, a flat uh, TV screen and uh, the, the beam came out and then it was deflected through 90 degrees. And uh, anyway, I uh, was very pleased, very flattered that uh, they come to uh, oh. rather than uh, my competitors and I built a piece of equipment. And you know, if you build enough of anything, something will go wrong. You do enough of anything and something will, will go wrong for sure. And, and uh, I did a lot of development work, a lot of trials, and um, got a piece of equipment that, that was good. And it went up to Edinburgh uh, in Scotland. And... Um, uh, I, I, was, I was really pleased um, and then one day I had a phone call from the chief scientist from Sinclair Research and uh, oh, uh, he told me in no uncertain terms they were losing 20% production and it was due to my equipment and uh, I was devastated um, so obviously I went straight up to uh, Scotland to see what was going on and the machine we built for them fired five getters simultaneously um, there were five TV tubes placed in a polystyrene package and then that package was pushed into a, a letterbox arrangement and then behind the letterbox arrangement were five coils and all five coils were fired simultaneously and they say they were getting a 20% failure rate and I went through the equipment I'd get oscilloscopes and everything and I couldn't find anything wrong with it um, and the problem was once you fired um, a getter you get that silvering effect that I talked about um, it's a a heat time process, it doesn't just uh, happen, it, it, there is a, a cooking time as it were and uh, the, the barium is slowly released and the, the glass slowly silvers up. Um, I'm talking about seconds you understand, um, but um, 
the, the problem is, once you've partially fired a getter, for some reason you can't go back and do it again. It's as if that little bit of silvering is enough to create um, a, a screen, uh, um, an electromagnetic screen. Uh, it doesn't make sense, but believe me, it's true. It creates a partial screen, and then you cannot go back and revisit that tube and, and refire it. So it meant they were making 20% scrap, and it was, uh, you know, supposedly all my fault. And um, I, I really couldn't get to, to the bottom of it at all. And um, uh, I was working through my lunch break trying to fix this machine. And one of the girls came up to me, one of the operators, and she says, Oh, how does that machine work? She says, because, uh, I don't know, Ethel and I had poked a broomstick <laughs> into it to see if we could get the end of the broomstick up, and it didn't work. Um, I could have kissed her. What, she, what she'd done in poking the broomstick up, she'd pushed one of the coils back into the machine, just a fraction, but it was enough to displace it. Uh, so that one in five, in other words, 20% <laughs> of the products um, uh, weren't being correctly processed. So anyway, that was, uh, that, that, that was quite something. And uh, um, the, uh, the, the scientist was, was very good because I'm sure he wanted to roast me, but when he realised it was their fault, uh, they, they were all apologies, but uh, just goes to show us say you, you do enough of anything and so, something will come and bite you and it, it might be a girl with a broomstick. Anyway, I'll show you some uh, other getters, um, oh, some other getter firing machines that I've made. I made some uh, handheld machines and I wanted a, a nice case for them and um, I couldn't, uh, couldn't really afford or couldn't have justified the cost of having uh, moulded cases manufactured. But I found I could buy Black & Decker drill cases, plastic cases. I bought them as spares, so I didn't buy the innards. Um, but uh, Black & Decker drill case and I could buy the switch and the screws and I simply carved the insides out. and. Um, uh, built the uh, the tank capacitors into there. And that, that's what this uh, what this girl's holding here, and uh, there's some other applications. I also use some cases uh, from um, chainsaws, uh, and that's uh, that part is only the work head. Uh, the induction heater is uh, the thing that creates the the radio frequency signal. Is a big box somewhere else, but. Um, Anyway, uh, that's just a little bit about one application. I've been involved with a lot of applications. For many years I had some of these tubes kicking around, but when I come to make this video I couldn't find one to photograph. And uh, I searched the web and uh, I found this image and I contacted the guy who had posted it and it was Rick Dickinson of Dickinson Associates. And Rick was involved with the development of the Sinclair Flat TV. And he's very kindly given me permission to uh, use this image and share it with you. I was very pleased to have been able to play some small part in bringing this product to production. And uh, you have to remember that uh, although it's uh, commonplace for flat TV screens uh, now with current technology, Back in the 1980s this was really cutting edge stuff and uh, although uh, electrostatic beam deflection was used in things like oscilloscopes etc the notion of bending it through 90 degrees I think was quite novel but uh, anyway uh, the little getter that uh, I've been talking about was just in the position here behind the pinch off point and of course uh, when the getter was fired uh, the printed circuit board uh, wasn't uh, involved, it was just the, uh, uh, the glass tube with its uh, internal electrodes. So, I hope you found that interesting guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.